Welcome to this week's episode of the Black Music Collective Podcast. The Recording Academy and Ebony have joined forces to celebrate music with a new dynamic six episode podcast series titled The Black Music Collective. The podcast will bring to you some of the top creators and business leaders in black music. I am your host, MC Light, and joining us today is Jeff Harleston. Jeffrey is general counsel and executive vice president of business and legal affairs for Santa Monica, California-based Universal Music Group, better known as UMG, the world leader in music-based entertainment with operations in more than 60 countries. UMG's labels include Capital, Interscope, Republic, Motown, Island, Def Jam, Decca, and Verve, as well as a leading global music publishing company, Universal Music Publishing, and the industry's leading merchandising company, Bravado. Harleston is a member of UMG's executive management board, and he is responsible for overseeing all business transactions, contracts, and litigation for UMG's operations worldwide. In addition, he is also responsible for the company's government relations, trade, and anti-piracy activities. Oh my goodness, Jeff, you are so busy. I can't even believe you have time to talk to me. It is nice to see you today. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, Light. Thank you so much. And it's an honor to be here with you today and, and be able to share a little bit of my, of, my, of my story. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you, with this long list of responsibilities here, I just have to ask you, you have done some of the biggest deals in music. You've been involved with those and considered one of the most powerful executives in the music industry. Can you please tell us how did you get your start? Uh, I my my start was was kind of unceremonious. Um, I was uh, you know I went to law school for the for the sole purpose of being on my feet in a courtroom trying cases. That's what I wanted to do. Mm. When I graduated, I went I went to a firm in in uh, in DC and uh, practiced for a few years there and, and had a, a little bit of success. And then I was asked to join the. Uh, uh, Office of Independent Counsel that was investigating the Iran Contra scandal, mm -hmm. kind of like for the young people listening, it was like the Robert Mueller of its day. Mm -hmm. uh, back in in the uh, this was this was a, I joined the, the office in the you know in the early very early nineties um, and was a federal prosecutor for for two years um, investigating and prosecuting uh, Iran Contra defendants, uh, and then that ended um, kind of abruptly as those things do. And uh, I was trying to figure out what was next. Am I going to go back to my to the law firm? Am I going to continue to be a prosecutor? And I got a call from a friend of mine from law school, mm -hmm. and she said, "Let me tell you, I'm working for this law for this uh, this law firm. I'm working for this record company out in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and we're about to hire a lawyer. And I thought of you. You'd be great. And mm. I, me, come on, I'm a, I'm a prosecutor. Maybe I'll be a judge one day. She <laughs> said, send your resume. I said, okay, I'll send my resume. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, they loved it. They flew me out. They interviewed me. They hired me. And that was MCA Records. And that was in, in 1993. In June of 93, I started. Ooh, uh, let me tell you, MCA was buzzing. That's that's MCA, around uptown. Uh, there you go. That was, it, that's yeah. exactly right. I, I was, uh, I came in and, and immediately uh, uh, started working. Uh, one of the, one of the, uh, uh, the, the matters that they gave me were a lot of the uptown deals and, and mm -hmm. very close with Andre and, and uh, you know, the artist Mary J. Blige, you know, Jodeci, Guy, Heavy D, those are my people. That's, that's what yeah. I can do. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Red, he happened Jeff to be. Jeff Red, there. Jeff Red. <laughs> yes. Actually, I had the, I had the pleasure of, of, of working with Jeff Red as an A&R at MCA later mm -hmm. in his career. He right. became an A&R executive, and yeah, we had a, we had a, we had a nice little run together. So yeah, yeah, yeah I remember you called that yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't get, You know that's why I rap, and I I don't mess with the singing. But you know what I found so fascinating about what you just shared is just right off the cuff, you said I knew from the beginning that I was going to be you know on my feet in a courtroom. Was there something that you saw? What was it that ignited that part of you that to want to do that? That's really, that's, you know, I don't know if anyone's ever asked me that question. Mm. It was something I, you know, you know, I, maybe it was Perry Mason episodes when I was a kid or something, mm -hmm. but it was really, you know, I, it was, it's, you know, it spoke to me 
um, as as something I thought was 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 really um, exciting and mm -hmm. and uh, um, you know you, you I wanted to be involved in something that that could help bring about change and yeah. I thought I thought okay law law does that mm -hmm. and, and I thought that it would be it would be uh, you know really to me law meant meant, meant a courtroom law didn't mean a boardroom. Uh, <laughs> So you know, and that—that's you know—that's what I thought it meant, and that's what right. I wanted. To do. And I wanted to be, you know, ladies and gentlemen, of the jury. You know, let me, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. So, um, ironically, the first job I had in, in a law firm, um, the partner I worked for, he took all the new associates and had us take acting classes, so we could learn how to how to deliver an opening and a closing argument. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So it's you know. Uh, that, and, and it's, it's, I think it's helped me to this day in terms of, you know, public speaking and things like that. It's really been, uh, been a That's blessing. That's awesome. I never heard of that being a prerequisite, uh, you know, for a law firm. Nor, but nor had I. I was surprised. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but uh, yeah. It yeah. paid off. Yeah, it paid I guess, I guess, I guess so. I, guess. I, have a I have a classmate. We were in elementary school together. And it turns out now he's part of the legal team at Universal. So I'm oh, like. No kidding. Yeah, his name is Jerry. Look, don't it's ask me. Juiced. Jerry. Juiced? Juiced. No, that's not his last name. It might come to me while we're while we're talking, but it was so great to see his face. I was like, oh my goodness. We're on not I shouldn't say opposite sides of the coin in entertainment, but he's Please on the inside, that. I'm on the out. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But it takes both sides. And that's and that's very important. That's yes, absolutely. Important. So you've been at UMG for 26 years you're coming up on 20, 20, 28 28 okay so you have two more june 1st yeah june 1st was my 28th anniversary oh well congratulations you're you're about to hit uh three decades in a moment what what do you think is your you know your biggest key to longevity and success um really it, it, a couple of things um first is understanding flexibility and, and one thing that I, I, uh, I didn't know when I entered the music business that was a, a, a pleasant surprise was the, the ability uh, or the, the, the welcoming for those who have kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, dexterity in their, in their personality and, and their, uh, you know, kind of intellectual pursuits. So being able to be flexible, uh, you know, when I first started, it was, I had probably four or five of the really good years uh, pre-Napster before things changed and the disruption and the whole, mm. all those changes. And, and um, what I found was, you know, when that happened, there was suddenly a premium for people who had kind of a, a mind like mine mm -hmm. uh, that, that, you know, understood business, but also understood the music business and, mm -hmm. and could help um, uh, formulate things. And, and, and to that end, the the you know, probably one of the single greatest um, factors in my career has been some of the people that I've had along the way that mm -hmm. have helped me uh, develop and, and taken taken time, frankly, to help me develop and and and, and provided guideposts along the way. When I you know mm -hmm. when I walked into MCA Records, I tell everybody uh, who asked me this story, uh, there was a there was a guy there uh, named Ernie Singleton. Yes. And, he I'm was, familiar with Ernie. Mm -hmm. He was the president of Black Music. That's right. Say that again. The president of um, Black Music. Music. Not not something we hear so much anymore. Right. But, but in '93, there was Ernie, and Ernie took me under his wing from the first day I walked in that building. Mm. Helped me find an apartment. I didn't have a place to live. I was living on sleeping on a friend of mine's couch. Mm. Helped me find a place to live. Introduced me to so many people. Mm -hmm. uh, and along with Ernie was was another gentleman named Lou Silas. Mm. Yes. Uh, who was a, a you know famous A and R and a wonderful man, and Lou also took me under his wing, mm -hmm. and and the third one that really looked out for me was Andre Harrell, yes. and and you know you, you you look back and and the three of those those three guys didn't get along, <laughs> they didn't get along, didn't agree on that much, right? But they agreed on one thing, and that mm -hmm. was that they were looking out for the the young black executives who were coming in the company. Mm -hmm. and, and and helping them, you know, along the way, and, and that was that was uh, wildly instrumental in, in my growth and development, as was as so many people in this business, 
uh, uh, to have a mentor and a and a and a and a you know and a guiding figure in your life like Clarence Avon, who yeah. took home, you know many a breakfast sitting in the polo lounge. Mm -hmm. so, and what are you doing? You need to do it. And and you know and I you know I I learned early on to just you know if Clarence said do it, I better do it. Right. Uh, and, and 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 they were wonderful, wonderful uh, characters in my in my career. Yeah, you know, you just taught a whole lesson right there, and a lot about um, one success not only has to do with the mentorship and the people in their in their lives that will speak uh, truth to them, but also their ability to be flexible. and And it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to have, you know, have been so clear on one thing, but then you come into some new information and that may swing your, your decision into another direction. So thank you for sharing that with us. Is there anything you wish you would have known or done differently when you first started out? Oh, uh, if I, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it's, um, I probably would have spoken up more. Um, I probably I would have been more aggressive, you know. Coming into the music industry as a lawyer, I immediately, you know, when, you, when you're when you work at a law firm, you're the top of the food chain in that organization. Mm -hmm. But when you come into a, a a record company as a lawyer, eh, you know, not so much. So, um, and I, I it took me a while to kind of find my place uh, mm -hmm. and 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 my comfort uh, mm -hmm. and to be able to to you know use my, you know, you know, kind of my training and my knowledge as a strength. Uh, uh, but, but it was, you know, it was intimidating. I remember the first time I, uh, this is back in MCA, um, uh, one of the a &R people was like, oh, you got to hear this new record. She was so excited. She pulled me in her office and played the record. She said, what do you think? I said, I, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You know, I was like, oh, guys, shouldn't have said that, huh? So, you know, I had to learn the etiquette um, and, and, and learn how, how to deal with that. But but right. um, that was, you know, that was one of the things that, that uh, that uh, you know, came with time. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I probably, you know, would have, you know, it, it was something that, that uh, it took me really a couple of years to start to feel comfortable and, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and figure out the business and figure out, the ways of, of of the industry, and 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 then once I figured it out, it's like okay, now I can I can navigate a little bit more, um, uh, which I did. Yeah, it feels like, uh, and then just learning the people around you how how to be most effective with your communication. Um, That's right. And what, what's interesting is what you said about the three wise men is mm -hmm. that they didn't necessarily agree with one another, but one thing they all had in common was you. And <laughs> you and all of the other young executives coming into the business. I, I actually had a story with Andre Harrell. You know, he was trying to get me to come in to be an A&R while he was at Motown. And I went up there to talk to him and he had all of these people up in the office with this young energy looking for that yeah. next hit and that next artist. And you know me, I need to be a little baby say, okay, are we really doing this or I'm just coming to hang out? And right. so, uh, <laughs> um, but he definitely looked to pour into me every time he saw me and, you know, bless me with with some knowledge. So thank you uh, for sharing that. I'm going to give our sponsors a little shout out here and then we'll get back to some questions. P&G sponsored this series and they did so because of the importance to them on focusing on black creatives. They have recently started a new program that aims to broaden the way black people are portrayed in advertising and entertainment through an increased investment in black directors, actors, crews, and media. Let's take a look at this clip. Next. 
ask yourself why. These are the black stories we've been shown. A narrow view that limits our understanding. much more to see. Let's widen the screen so we can widen our view. Powerful, huh? That was very powerful. What, sure. did, what did you think of while watching? Um, I, 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 you know, in many, in many respects, I thought of experiences I had, I've had, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as a black man doing various things. Um, and and you know, uh, sadly, I'm I'm very conscious of how <clears throat> maybe too much sometimes how people are perceiving what I'm doing, right? You know? And uh, and and just thinking about that as I was watching it. Yeah, I think P and G did a great job at at capturing all the dynamics that come into play when we're when we're dealing with one person. It's a ripple really effect. <laughs> we're dealing with family members, loved ones, children parents, so on and so forth. So I think they did a great job. So you were recently tapped to lead Universal's Task Force for Meaningful Change. This was an initiative that was started in direct response to what happened to George Floyd and the civil unrest that it caused. What made you want to get involved with this initiative? Um, well, I was, I was actually, I received a call uh, that Saturday, there was that weekend after you know the the, the Floyd uh, murder had had been had been you know kind of come into full blossom, and I, I received a call that Saturday from uh, uh, Sir Lucian Grange, the chairman of Universal, um, asking me to to lead the task force, um, and uh, I my my you know what what led me to want to do it, uh, you know I, I couldn't think of you know you know any greater honor. Um, and I wanted, I wanted to be, to, to be in that position. Um, and immediately, uh, the first thing I did was call Ethiopia, have to marry him, who, uh, who's the chairman of Motown. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Said, e, e, let's do this together. And so, so we spent that weekend sketching out what, what we thought the task force should look like, mm -hmm. who we thought we should have as, as founding members. And you know, by Monday morning, we kicked it off. And mm. It was it's 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 uh, it's very important uh, to both of us and the company. Um, and and uh, I think we had an opportunity to do some real um, some real some real some real good work um, <clears throat> through the summer and certainly mm -hmm. in the fall with the election and, and continuing now as we approach Juneteenth. Uh, well, you know, I'm glad you said that because I wanted to ask, what do you hope will come from the task force? Like what type of change will we see in the industry or? Yeah, it's interesting. We, we you know, I was asked to, to lead the task force. Mm -hmm. um, on the phone with Ethiopia, we came up with for meaningful change because that meant a great deal to us. That means, mm -hmm. that means this is not something, we don't want it to be 2020 to be remembered as the summer of George Floyd. We wanted to make sure that this was an inflection point that really made a difference. That that mm. hopefully the next generation wouldn't have to experience the types of, of moments that we were experiencing last summer, and sadly continue to experience today. Mm -hmm. So, um, what we hope to achieve, you know, we 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 really looked at it. We approached it from from many different avenues. You know, obviously uh, things of a legislative nature, things of a philanthropic nature. Uh, but we also felt it was important to turn the spotlight on ourselves mm -hmm. and look at our company and and see what we could do to to uh, improve um, the the situation for people of color and specifically black people mm -hmm. uh, within the universal system. So 
um, you know, what, what we've, some of the things we've done is we actually are, we're, we're, I think now two weeks into our, uh, our uh, inaugural internship program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an HBCU internship program where we have a little over 30 uh, students with us for the summer, sadly, virtually all from HBCUs mm -hmm. um, and, and really, you know, trying to not, not, not broaden the, the uh, uh, um, or not change the internship um, uh, pool, but broaden it substantially um, and, and mm -hmm. provide opportunities, not only for, for these individuals to have internships, but also to have some mentorship. Um, mm -hmm. We've also taken steps to internally uh, develop an, a mentorship program for current executives, um, really focusing on recruitment, training, and mentorship. You know, these are these are some of the elements that <clears throat> are very important uh, to to you know to, to help increase the 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 numbers of of uh, African Americans uh, at, at Universal and other companies in senior management ranks who have uh, you know individuals that have. Uh, uh, you know, authority over a P and L. That's very mm -hmm. uh, things that significant. You know, um, so so we're we're working hard and continuing. The work is is just beginning. And mm -hmm. I, uh, there was a a report that came out recently. I think it, I, I read about it today. Maybe it came out yesterday uh, from the USC Edinburgh School that did a study uh, around uh, uh, diversity and and uh, uh, within the music industry. Not just looking at labels, but looking at labels and managers and lawyers and, mm -hmm. and promoters and and uh, uh, you know it's it, you know, the, the the conclusion you know is is very clear that there's still a tremendous amount of work to be done. Um, Absolutely. And Absolutely. Well, that you guys are off to an amazing start, and I can't wait to see what is you know what is down the pipeline. Maybe a year from now, what what will those interns be able to share about their experience, uh, even if only uh, virtually, I'm sure that they're gaining skills that that will be priceless. Um, so what you're initially doing is, you know, much like the P&G campaign is widening the screen, right? So no, when no, you look back, mm -hmm. No question. That's yeah. exactly right. So I was gonna ask when you look back at your career, did you ever imagine being able to impact uh, not just these interns, but black culture as a whole? No, I didn't. And, and I, I mean, I, you know, I, and, you know, I didn't initially over time, um, you know, I, I, I realized that it, it was part of my responsibility mm -hmm. um, as, as my career progressed. And again, you know, when you have mentorship like like Clarence Avon on your shoulder, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you 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 really are, are able to understand your role and the importance of your role, uh, not only for yourself but for others. Um, but that's you know, for the artist community and for for other executives and, and other people uh, who are aspiring to do things. So so it, it, I, I do take it as a as a very you know, serious responsibility. Um, you know, and it's and it's not lost on on me, and, and I've had this conversation with other black executives that uh, you know it's 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 you know it's it, it's not as if there's there's not enough on us, but we also have to have to give more. Um, yeah. It's just it's just it's just what we it's just what we have to do. Right. Uh, and 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 you just know, being, to, uh, do it. Being in service. That's yes. like that's, that's what we want. That's great. what it all sums up to. Yeah. Right. Great way of saying it, in service. And in that's, service. that's you know, paying it forward, being in service and, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and being able to see, you know, some some of the people I've mentored, uh, you know, blossom and grow has been mm -hmm. great to see. And and uh, and 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 hopefully there'll, there'll be more to come. Right. Absolutely. Well, there's no secret and we're coming down to the to the end. But I just wanted to get these last uh, couple questions in. There's no secret that there is definitely imbalance in the industry. And do you see a way uh, to right the wrongs of past of the past with legacy artists? You know, those who did so much work, but stand to gain nothing at this point or very little. You know, the the. Uh 
the history of of the music industry and in the black community, particularly black artists, is is you know is a very long one in the United States, mm -hmm. and it's also you know a large chunk of that is also very painful. Mm -hmm. um, and and looking back at it, um, th there are there are many lessons to be learned um, from from uh, the 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 historic treatment, and I think there are. There are a number of of of, uh, of ways to not only recognize but but uh, um, you know uh, learn and, and build from from uh, from the past. You know, an organization I've been involved with for a long time has been the Rhythm and Blues Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, where where uh, you know I, I was helpful and instrumental in, in creating a fund with Universal uh, to help uh, the Rhythm and Blues Foundation really exist to help. Uh, Rhythm and blues artists. Uh, initially, it was from the '40s, '50s, and '60s. Now it's '70s and '80s. Mm -hmm. I think we even touched '90s this year. But, mm -hmm. but providing aid uh, uh, for mm -hmm. a variety of reasons, um, you know, health, uh, uh, unemployment, you know, whatever, whatever emergency situations might come up to address mm -hmm. some of these things. So, so you know, organizations. That's amazing. That's amazing. We look. I'll speak on behalf of everyone. We thank you for for the work in that. Oh area. no! It's, 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 by, by the way, there's, it's 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 an amazing group of people that that uh, that uh, you know. I, th I think it was really uh, Ruth Brown was one of the founders, and and it's you know it's been it's and Ahmed Erdogan was was critical in in helping the organization grow, and 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 it's really one doesn't get a lot of publicity, but it's an organization that cares and makes a difference. Um, right. and, and that's, you know, those are the kinds of kinds of things that we, we all have to uh, be mindful of and, mm -hmm. and, and look yeah. out for these artists, you know, and, Absolutely. and you know, we're, you know, you know, it's, it's, uh, I don't know if you know this, but the last 14 years, 14 years feels like that last 14 <laughs> months, I had been, uh, uh, the interim chairman of Def Jam in my spare time because I don't okay. have a um, and, uh, and that's a huge undertaking. Okay. It's, yeah, it's been, it's been, you know, in, in a global pandemic in the middle mm -hmm. of great social unrest. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a challenging, uh, uh, past 14 months in a lot of ways, but, mm -hmm. but, you know, as, as I'm one thing I've, I've come to see and, and, you know, you know, uh, we're watching hip hop, uh, mature, mm -hmm. uh, and hip hop artists are maturing in, in ways that, you know, some of the, some of, some of them in the early hip hop artists, uh, you know, there's 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 legacy issues there that uh, mm -hmm. addressed, and and so, um, you know, it's 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 given me an opportunity to deal with some of those situations as well. Um, you know, talking to these artists directly and and, and helping them along. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, we love the work that you're doing, uh, and the fun. That's that's amazing. Um, you know, much like what Music Cares does. Please tell me the name of the fund again. Oh, the, the fund that we have with the Rhythm and Blues Foundation? Yeah. The Universal Motown Fund. Okay. Um, that was the name we, we chose for it. And it's, and it's uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, our fund is is, is uh, earmarked for specifically any artist that's a royalty bearing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, artist uh, signed to any universal label mm -hmm. now that, that, that existed then or, you know, and now, right? As oh. we as we acquire labels, we, we you know, we, we bought EMI uh, about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Those guys count too. Okay. So, um, you know, we're glad to help. Uh, that, that's excellent. So um, one last question. And I probably know the answer to this just because of this interview and just learning what it is that you've used your time so wisely to do. When you look back at your career, what do you want your legacy to be? I want my legacy to be that I cared mm. and I tried mm. and hopefully I made things a little better. I love it. I love it. I would like to thank my guest, Jeff, for sharing his journey with us today. Again, this is the Black Music Collective Podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you, Light. <laughs>